Guys, what's going on? I hope you guys are well. I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope everything's good wherever you are. So guys, uh, I've been, I, I've spoke to somebody on, on Instagram and, and we've had a back and forth saying, him saying, I, I'm not saying back and forth, back and forth in, a, in just a normal conversation. And he asked me, uh, Imran, do you think that PBC, you know, need uh, Canelo Alvarez to fight Caleb Plant now? Um... Do you think that they need that because the Pacquiao Spence fight has fallen through? Uh, so that means that now they need to make this fight because they need they want to they want to you know have a splash this year, which was supposed to be Pacquiao Spence. And initially they thought that the Pacquiao Spence fight was their big fight, so they they, they weren't really that they didn't really care if the Canelo Plant fight. Well, they you know they wanted to make the fight, but they. They weren't desperate because they had Pacquiao Spence and they felt that was going to do great business for them. And they had a great schedule. But now they're their super fight, their massive super fight that they had scheduled between Pacquiao and Spence has fallen through. And listen, Pacquiao, Uga is still a good fight, but it's not going to do anywhere near the numbers that uh, Pacquiao and Spence would have done. So are PBC now going to be a lot more aggressive in trying to make that Canelo fight on Fox? Uh, are they going to do all they can now in order to secure that fight uh, so they can recuperate the money that they lost? Because one thing we know about Canelo, even though, you know, it may not be seen as a hugely competitive fight uh, because, you know, Plant might be uh, not seen as a, it, it's not a 50-50 fight, but Canelo is such a big draw, draw in America and such a big pulling power. Uh, that he'd be able to attract and draw huge numbers even on pay-per-view of $75, uh, which will be able to generate a huge pay-per-view numbers, which will be able, in, all, you know, in order will generate huge you know, pay-per-view sales. So that would definitely make PBC a lot more aggressive in to make the fight. I do agree with, with that. I do agree with that because I think from a business point of view, they want to make the biggest fights. And Pacquiao Spence was that, uh, and and let's not forget they were they were doing that all in house as well because Pacquiao is with Al Heyman still, so it's all in house and it's easy to make. Whereas Canelo's not in house, but now that the fight's fallen through, I think here's the thing: I think regardless of the Pacquiao Spence fight, I think it was for PBC a massive opportunity for have to have Canelo on their platform. Um, so whether or not you know. They like the fact the fact that the, the Canelo is such a big star. It just makes sense for any broadcaster to want Canelo on their platform. Also, if PBC have a good relationship with Canelo and everything goes smooth, there's a there's more of a chance that he will do deals in the future with them and have more fights against their guys when he wants to fight their guys. See, the reason why Canelo doesn't want to go be uh, tied down to a fight three fight deal is because he wants freedom. He wants to be able to do what he wants to do, not what him being tied down to. Because P one thing we know about PBC, they very rarely have cross promotion fights. You know, only when it's a super fight, like Wilder Fury. But you very rarely see, like, you know, you see ESPN fighters fighting, like, Igas Kabielaskas, I think he's, I think he's not with uh, ESPN or, or Top Rank anymore. But you've seen Top Rank fighters, Ramirez, fight on, on DAZN. You've seen, you know, DAZN fighters probably fight on, on ESPN. You, you see those cross-promotion, Rob Aram and Eddie Hearn have a good relationship. You know, you've, I, I'm pretty sure you've even seen... Uh, Golden Boy and Oscar, uh, and Bob Aaron work together. You know, they've worked together. And, let's, uh, you know, and Golden Boy, uh, Oscar Delo used to be promoted by Oscar, uh, Bob Aaron. So, to be honest with you, just my opinion, that I think PBC are probably the only promotional company that probably like to keep things, everything in house. They very rarely have, you know, send their fighters off to fight another unless it's like they Andy Ruiz was one but that wasn't a I, I guess everyone's the same I, I guess I guess everyone's the same because think about it Andy Ruiz at the time he wasn't really a huge you know asset to but Alan Al Heyman at that point 
Al Heyman probably thought he's a guy, it's a great opportunity for him, let him go, he's not somebody that... But if it was someone like Deontay Wilder, then it would be a different ballgame. Because Al Heyman, and not just Al Heyman, this is what I, this is what I feel like PBC get more of a rap for this. Uh, Al Heyman somehow gets a lot, like, no promoter wants their big star to fight on another platform. Uh, top rank don't want Terence Crawford to fight on his own. They don't want Tyson Fury to fight on his own or fight on Fox. Of course not. They don't want Tia, like, I know they let Tia Fimo fight on, on Thriller, but that went to purse bids. And they lost the purse bid. But they don't want their stars, they don't want their major fighters to be fighting on other networks. No. They want them to fight on their networks. ESPN want all their best fighters to fight on their network. You know, all because Top Rank has, has a probably a deal with ESPN. So Top Rank, ESPN want to make sure that Top Rank's fighters fight on their platform. All their best fighters. They don't want Lomachenko to fight on his own. Because that, that, that means they can't show the fight. So, of course, the zone want all their best fighters to fight on their platform. The zone, the zone don't want, um, they don't want uh, Andre to fight on another platform, or they don't. They would prefer them to fight on their own platform because it makes a lot more sense. That's with every promoter. Every promoter looks out for the best interest for their company. Their, you know, everybody's doing the same. You know, so I, I don't think Al Heyman's any different. In this situation, it's a unique situation. A unique situation in the sense that Canelo's such a big star. He's such a huge star. And it just makes sense, you know, for, for them to make this fight. Because it, it, for me, it'll benefit PBC. They'll make a huge amount of money. So it makes a lot of sense for them to make the fight. So that's why. Whereas this wouldn't happen. Like with Andre and Charlo, it's difficult because... Andre and Charlo isn't that big a fight. You know, it's not going to move the needle that much. Whereas a Canelo plant fight would because of Canelo. Canelo's such a big star, he's going to generate huge pay per view numbers, which inevitably is going to generate huge sales, which means that Fox and PBC, they'll have more eyes on it. They'll make them money. So, you know, for me personally, I, I think when it's Canelo, I think every broadcaster would want him to fight on their network. So even if Canelo wants to fight Baterbiev, who's with ESPN and Top Rank, they're gonna want they're gonna want Canelo to fight on their platform because they know the numbers that Canelo would generate on their platform. Canelo, no matter where he fights, people are gonna tune in. Canelo can fight anywhere: the Zone, ESPN, Fox, wherever. People are gonna tune in. His fans, hardcore fans, are gonna tune in. They're gonna tune in. Simple as that. So Canelo could fight wherever. People are going to tune in. And this is the thing. Um, and that's why Fox would want him to fight on their platform, of course, because they know he has a huge, he's a huge star. So, yeah, going back to the original question, I think PBC would want Canelo on their platform, period, anyway. They'd want, it, even if it's a one fight deal, they'd rather him. I reckon they probably couldn't come to terms previously because of the fact that they felt the replacement it was a bit you know expensive but they may agree to that now especially as you said that the fight between Pacquiao and Ugas they may agree to that because at the end of the day you know PBC Fox they want to put on big fights they want to put on big fights they want to you know do huge pay-per-view numbers so the fact that all broadcasters want to put on big fights it, it makes sense for them to want Canelo on their platform because everybody wants to do great business. Everybody wants to make money. Everyone wants to do huge pay-per-view numbers. Obviously, when you're fighting, when, when, when you're looking to have Canelo on your platform, it comes at a huge price because Canelo's a massive star and he's going to want a huge amount of money. Um, but Canelo's guaranteed pay-per-view buys. Like people are going to tune in to watch Canelo Alvarez. So you're not... You're not... You're, you're not at a big, big risk. I know the numbers that obviously they're being guaranteed is, is you know, they, they would be confident with the ticket prices and with the, with the pay-per-view numbers. They know that they got a good chance of making a profit here. So, you know, at the, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, Canelo Alvarez is the biggest star in the sport for me, you know, and I, I just feel having him on your platform will obviously definitely do, it, it's a good thing. 
You know, it's, it's a good thing. It's going to do great business. It's going to do, you're going to do great numbers. So personally, that's just my, that's just my, my opinion, to be honest. I personally think that Canelo, Canelo will, will do great business. And most importantly for the boxing fans, uh, we want to see the fight. We want to see Canelo Alvarez v Caleb Plant. We've been wanting to see it. We've been, and, and here's the thing. A lot of people don't even think the fight is as competitive. They think Canelo will... They think Canelo will beat Caleb Plant, but I think it's just the fact that Canelo has an opportunity to create history. Canelo has an opportunity to do something great, you know, and people want to see it. People want to see Canelo become undisputed. His fans want to see Canelo become undisputed. So it's it's a it's great. It's a it's a great fight. It's it does you know the first Mexican undisputed champion potentially we could see, uh, and Caleb Plant has has a chance to create history as well. You know, Caleb Plant's a good fighter. He may be overlooked. So this is what I'm trying to say. I, I want to see the fight. I'm pretty sure a lot of you want to see the fight. So hopefully they can make the fight. Hopefully they can make this fight because let's be honest, we all want to see it. It's a great fight. It's going to do, it's going to do great numbers. Uh, everyone's going to be a winner. Uh, and hopefully we get to see another undisputed champion crowned at the end of the fight, which is what the goal is for box boxing fans want to see the best fight the best. And they want to see who is the best. Ultimately, we want to know who is the best. Yeah? When we watch football, the Premier League, we want to see who the best is. So that's why we, over the season, you get to see who the best is. Everybody plays each other, and the best at the end is crowned champions. The same way with this. We want to see all the best fight each other in the 140-pound division. We saw all the best fight each other, and Josh Taylor was crowned the undisputed champion. That should happen in every division. And it should be structured. It should be, these things should, should happen. But unfortunately in boxing, you know, because of the politics of boxing, unfortunately it's probably one of the sports where, you know, where sometimes the best don't fight the best. The fat boxing fans don't get the fights that we, that we always want because boxers are basically, they're in, they're in control. They're in power, especially the top ones. They control who they want to fight, when they want to fight. Um, they control everything. It's not. It's not. Stru it's not structured in a way where it's forced upon them. They have to fight this guy. You know, it's, there's no league. It's like when they fought in the WBSS. That's why I like that tournament because they had to fight each other. The problem is with that is that most of the guys that go into tournaments like that are generally are not very marketable fighters. Like you won't see the, he the heavyweight division have that because it's prob it probably doesn't make sense for them financially. You know, so the really big, big fighters, why are they going to go into a tournament when they're, because the top, top fighters are looking to fight guys that they know they can generate the most money. You know, and um, how, is it, how does, again, the structure of the tournament may not really work for the top, top guys that are making a lot of money. Like Canelo wouldn't want to go into a tournament because that would basically mean he's not free to do what he wants. You know, although I would love to see it, the fact of the matter is, it's just not practical for the real, real top fighters, uh, unless the money was like crazy at the end of it, where it just make a lot of sense, you know. Uh, for Canelo, I just don't. Uh, someone like that, Canelo, Joshua, guys that are making a lot of money, would they really want to go into a tournament? I don't think so. So, although I love the structure of that tournament, I just don't think it's practical for some of the top fighters uh, that are making a lot of money. So. If you look at most of the fighters that went in uh, to those tournaments, although they were, might have been the best in the division, they were guys that didn't have a huge uh, profile, you know? They weren't your mega, mega stars in boxing like your Joshua's and like even the Super 6 that happened. All of those guys that entered that, a lot of the super middleweights didn't really have a huge profile. Like you look at Andre Wood, for example, he never had a huge profile throughout his whole career, which he deserved to be a lot bigger than what he was. But those, those tournaments helped those guys to break out, to, to make a name. Uh, and it, I think that, the, you know, for Josh Taylor, for example, him winning it, that helped him break out and, and make a name. You know, Usyk, he benefited from it. You know, Callum Smith kind of benefited from it. But if you look at most of the winners of that tournament, they definitely benefited from it. You know, Anue, he benefited from it. So there's many guys that have be benefited from it. But 
It's just whether you could get the top guys and you could structure something like, imagine that in the heavyweight division. You have Joshua, Wilder, uh, you know, Fury, Dillian White. You have, you know, you know, you know, Joe Joyce or Ortiz or, you know, those type of guys fighting or Ruiz, you know, guys like that fighting in a tournament. Wow. How brilliant would that be? But it, it's not really, it's not practical, to be honest. So, yeah, hopefully it can happen one day, but let, let's see. Leave your thoughts, guys. Let me know what you think. I know I've gone off on a little bit of a tangent, but yeah. Do you think this Canelo fight now will happen, that Pacquiao spends for? Leave your thoughts. Let me know what you think, guys. And guys, remember to please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.